Hey guys, it's Mr. Creighton, and today we're going to talk about like, this really unique and interesting form of art. Uh, it's something that's way different from what we've seen in the past, and well, just let me show you. <music> Let me stop this for a second and then bring it back. I hope you notice that the cup, the coffee cup looked a little bit awkward on the opposite side. So let me rewind this. So take a look at this. This part's really important that you check this out. But look at it this way. It looks perfectly normal. It looks vertical. It looks like the cup is standing up on the ground, even though it's flat. And that's the optical illusion, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, so, we are going to break down a little thing called optical art and street art. So, even if you look at this image that's currently on the screen, it might look a little bit funky, and I'm going to break down why. So, what is op art? Well, first of all, it's one of my favorite art movements, but what is it to you? Uh, it's known as optical art. Optical meaning really how your eyes work, so how your eyes uh, take in light, how they see movement and colors, and things of that nature. Uh, so it's a style of visual art that makes use of optical illusions, uh, and that's really the unique thing about it. So it's this movement that started in 1930 Chicago, which is really cool. And the reason why is you figure this is an art movement that started what? About an hour and a half away from us or less, depending on how you drive. Uh, but that's really cool because it started in the Midwest, really close to home. And op artworks are abstract. Uh, if you're not familiar with abstract, really it means art that does not depict a literal image. And literal is another word for representational in the art world. So think about like this. If you drew a flower and it looks like a flower or think about when you we were drawing the face and you drew the eyes nose mouth and you're trying to represent those with light and dark areas and get the shapes accurate well that's representational you're representing that thing well abstract is different abstract means you're going to represent something in a distorted or exaggerated way so you're kind of pushing and pulling these things uh, that you normally don't see in art. So think about the Mona Lisa, who we looked at earlier this semester. Uh, it's a realistic looking lady with a realistic looking background. That is representational. That is literal. A lot of abstract works are also non-objective. And if you think back to our design unit way, way back from the beginning of the semester, uh, so you had to create these two designs that use shapes and colors and space. Non-objective is that. It's just like this image in the screen. It does not represent a person, place, or thing. But we're really focusing on the idea of using these things in order to make this work. So just these shapes and colors and all that good stuff. Uh, so if you look at this image on the right, this is an optical illusion and it works in a very specific way. So look close and you'll see a bunch of lines and it's really what we do with those lines. So take a look. And if you look at, you'll see that the lines in the background are straight, but the ones that follow the skull curve and they flow and fit that shape. Some are thicker, some are thinner, but those lines, that's the swelling and warping and curving creates that optical illusion. So hopefully you can see a skull in that thing. Well, if you look at these images, they all use lines. They all use uh, some, some uh, shapes as well for the most part. And they're all black and white, but they look three-dimensional. And one reason why is they all use a little thing called perspective. Uh, meaning that we're trying to make something look 3D when it really doesn't. These designs are all flat like a piece of paper. They're all flat like my screen. But a good example of this, uh, if you look at the design uh, top left, 
that design has lines that are thinner when they're further away because of course as things get further away from our perspective they get smaller and when they get closer to us they get larger their life size and you see these lines as they get closer to us they get further apart they get larger and they kind of curve to fit that shape that cliff which makes it look almost like a waterfall so it's this optical illusion uh, that's working in a really unique way just like the other three designs so this one, ooh, this one's a little bit hard to look at, um, but this one, uh, I don't know if you guys try it. So what I'd like for you to do is take a look at the center. So look at the, the ball in the center and move your head close to the ball. So move it forward and then slowly move it backward. Move it forward again and slowly move your head on backwards. <laughs> and and uh, this creates an optical illusion so your brain and your eyes work together and they create this illusion of movement and there's a reason why this works so i'm going to break down on the next slide why it looks like this is moving even though it's really not because it, it is a still image on the screen but your the image is designed to trick your eye so here's the deal if you look at this design so especially if you have your eye go from left to right and down to the next section right to left and down to the next section um it might seem like things are moving so really what's happening is if you were ever look at a light like so look at a light bulb and you stare at it and you close your eyes you can still see that light even though your eyes are closed uh well essentially that's what we call a ghost image so it remains in your retinas as an after image so one theory is that small involuntary eye movements cause this ghost image to overlap with the image on the page. So what you're seeing is you are seeing what you're currently looking at, but also the previous image uh, at the same time. It's uh, called a moray effect. So the cool thing is it's creating this optical illusion to help you see multiple things, which is really, really unique and really crazy. Um, so. One of the best to ever do this is M.C. Escher, not Usher, but M.C. Escher. Uh, so he did th this in the 1930s, so he's one of the first to do it. But he's a Dutch graphic artist known for his mathematically inspired artwork and optical illusions. So yes, there is some math in art, uh, but a good example of this is if you look at his image on the far right, the one of the hands, also one of my favorite images by him. Take a look at the details, look at the hands, look at the sleeves, look at the paper, and you'll notice some things that make this look 3D uh, and really makes this appear to be an optical illusion. All right, hopefully you notice some things. Well, let me break it down. So first of all, look at the hands. Uh, so they look very three-dimensional because there's value. So there's lighter and darker parts, and that value gives it form. So it looks three-dimensional like your own hand. If you look at your own hand right now, the light's hitting one part, and it's hitting less of another part. So your hands look 3D. You can tell that they have sides, and they're round. Um, you see that in his drawing. But also, if you look at his wrists and the cuffs, so the sleeves that he's wearing on the shirt, those are just lines. That's all line work, which makes it look like a drawing. You all know drawings are built through lines, uh, so you see that. But the last thing that really sets this apart is the fact that the hands break the shape of the paper. They break the plane of the paper. They overlap it, which makes it look 3D. Um, and it's no different than the image on the left where MC Escher is tricking you to um, see something that's not really there or see multiple things in the same image. So if you were to look at the water in this image and kind of start at the bottom and flow all the way to the top, this half looks flat. But if you look at the pillars that is in, in between each section, it looks like it has multiple levels. And what he's trying to do is trick your eye to see that there is multiple levels there's all other ways he's doing that. If you get the little waterfall at the top, that of course is top left. And as you go towards the bottom left, that's a lower level. Same thing if you just look at these uh, sections. Well, if you start on the bottom right and work your way to the top left, it looks like there's multiple levels, even though that's really not. And that's the cool thing about the idea of taking what you know and trying to 
force you to see something different and trick in your eye, which is pretty cool. So um, he's really known for creating uh, these really unique images with architecture, perspective, and impossible spaces. I don't know if any of you have seen Inception, but it's a little bit like that, creating these um, environments that can't exist in real life, almost like these dreamlike uh, images. But next, we're going to kind of look at one of my favorite styles of art, because people are currently doing it right now, and that is this. Um, so street art. So street artists have been creating visual art in public locations since the 1960s and the 70s. Um, and one reason why uh, street art was designed this way is so people could actually go out and see it. You don't have to be in an mu art museum or some art gallery or some place where it's just specifically for art. Street art is for the people. Uh, in the 60s and 70s, there was a lot of um, unrest with the civil rights movement. Um, also, just a lot of communities that were suffering um, and were struggling due to some of the epidemics uh, with drugs and also just uh, the unrest with Vietnam. And people really wanted to get their ideas and their opinions out there. And one way to do that was to show artwork in a public space. So this was the beginnings of graffiti and vandalism. Uh, they, or sorry, <laughs> it wasn't the beginning of vandalism, but it was really the idea of being able to use graffiti and vandalism as a new mode where artists can try to make their audience think and bring beauty into the world. So street artwork, uh, street art is artwork in a public area and it usually contests hypocrisy and inequality in society. And that goes back to what I was saying was happening in the 60s and the 70s. Their goal is really to get that message out there to kind of that they couldn't get out there uh, in a gallery or in the art museum in those. This is artwork, again, that's meant for the people to see in a public arena. So if you look at that image top right and bottom right, they are really awesome. But the one on the right deals with an optical illusion. It's forcing you to see a perspective that doesn't really exist. And we're going to break that down um, very, very shortly, how, how that's happening. Uh, but the image on the right is street artwork that kind of plays with the environment uh, around the artist, which is also really awesome because you don't see that in traditional art, which is what makes street artwork so, so cool. And one of the best to ever do it, who is currently living right now, Banksy. So Time Magazine selected the British artist Banksy, a graffiti master, painter, and activist, and a filmmaker, for its list of the world's 100 most influential people in 2010. So he is one of the most famous living artists. You look at all those images on the right side. Um, those are images that Banksy has created, and we can tell that it's his because of that unique style. Um, but really, his artwork is really to um, create a narrative uh, about the things that are happening in society, especially the thing that he's experiencing uh, currently in Europe. And the cool thing about this dude is that no one actually knows what he looks like. Um, and in a world of uh, social media and where it's so easy to kind of document things because everyone has a camera phone, uh, it's really cool that this guy has kept his identity hidden and he can still go out and create a really unique message. So, if you look at these images, these are chalk art competition um, paintings and drawings. And so I've been to a couple of these, and the things that these people can do is just incredible and unique uh, and mind-blowing. Because, of course, if you look at that image of the Pac-Man game, top right, it looks 3D. But that's not how it's drawn. It just looks 3D from one side. Same thing with that world image, that optical illusion. I'm sure you've seen people um, take photographs where someone holds something in the distance because it looks small because of the perspective of it. That's the same type of idea. So they're making this optical illusion and create something really unique and really dope. And there's perspective. It's a forced perspective. And that's how they do that. And I'm going to show you. Uh, and that's why when I'm seeing this stuff done in person, it's been so incredible. So take a look at this on the next slide. So here's the deal. If you look at that slug on the right side. That's what you see from the back side of the image. If you look at the slug on the left side, so bottom left, that is how it's drawn. So... How does this perspective work? Uh, it relies on exactly the same calculations as technique developed during the Renaissance, and that's where perspective really took off. If you decide 
on the viewing point. So the viewpoint that someone will see it. So the viewpoint is the place where the observer stands or sits. You can then plot how everything in that person's view will recede and elongate as it gets further away. So essentially this artist creates a point on the ground and they kind of draw the image expanding out. It makes like a gigantic V uh, and it all gets smaller as it gets closer to the viewer. So the things that are for further away from the viewer, they have to draw big. And then the things that are getting close to the viewer, they have to draw smaller and kind of stretch them out. So the simple fact that further objects, so objects that are further away seem smaller, uh, they're trying to kind of um, distort that idea. So if you take a look at this, this is how you see it when you are on the side of the viewer that the artist wants you to see. So this is not how it's really drawn, but it looks three-dimensional. It looks like these Lego men are standing up. But when you see how they really drew it, take a look at this. This is crazy. So that's what I was talking about. The objects that are uh, further away, they have to draw them big. So that way the, the people can still see the size in the back, the same size as the front. Because of course, as things get further away, well, they get smaller. So they're trying to force you to see this. So this is how it's drawn. Now take a look at how you perceive the real thing, the real finished product. Nope. From this angle too, it still looks weird. So it only looks right from the opposite side. So from the side, the artist wants you to see it. So now take a look at this. That's how we should see it. It's crazy. Uh, so they drew this thing all on the ground. It looks 3D, even though it's really not. That's the optical illusion element of it. That's what makes it look so berserk. It looks like we're looking inside of this <laughs> little little uh, area where all these Lego men are standing up, even though they're really flat on the ground. And there are competitions all across the U.S., all across really the world. They're really big in Europe as well, where people compete and draw these massive drawings and uh, with, with chalk and, and paint. And, but take a look at this too. This is what makes us so crazy. This one's huge, but the one on the next slide is massive. This spans like i don't know like probably several houses deep this thing is and it looks like it's three-dimensional it's playing around with the optics that we see um that's op an optical illusion in the nutshell it's really forcing you to see something that's not really there forcing you to see multiple things at the same time playing around with how you perceive light um and space and shapes and colors and that's what makes it so cool uh Optical art, op art.